We haven't left the apartment in six years, four months, 21 days. Well, like, physically at least. We work at home, we sleep, we eat, we bathe at home. We have all the entertainment and sustenance and social interaction we'll ever need right at our fingertips. On the computer. At home. You get the picture. It took a while for some people to get used to it. They shook their heads, called us hermit, spoke in solemn, pitiful whispers to our loved ones at family gatherings. We assume. It's not a movement. It's not a cause. It's not a revolution. It's the way we've chosen to live. Individually. Inside. You know we're just going to order more.
worst part about remembering something is that it's already over. Dogs die after 12 years. On average. She lasted nine. The only thing more terrifying than existing is existing and having nobody to share it with. How are you sleeping? Yeah. What? I asked you how you were sleeping. Well, I, I meant to say well, sorry. That's fine. You just look sort of tired. You've got those uh, under the eyes. Well. This marks, what, uh, three weeks now, right? Right. So, if you don't mind me asking, what are you doing instead? Her sons, the autumn, can't prepare themselves for the toughest time of their year. Broadleaf trees unveil what seems to us a colorful spectacle. But for these plants, it's the beginning of a series of urgent and drastic survival strategies to cope with the coming cold. They begin by pulling all the water and nutrients within their leaves back into the trunk. The last rays of useful sunlight are channeled into making a sugary antifreeze that will protect the body of the tree. Green pigment, chlorophyll, disappears, leaving purples, reds, oranges, and yellows. Finally, the leaves die, and the trees discard them. As temperatures drop below freezing, the plants of broadleaf forests settle down to hibernate until spring. And it's getting harder and harder to remember why I thought that this was any better than whatever is out there. I see. And then that voice. The voice in my head. I told you about it, I think. It's back. to explain. It's 
this voice, it's, it's me. The doctor says we spend too much time here, dwell, quite literally, in the past. He says it's yet another crutch we use to distract ourselves from reality. To justify our lifestyle. To satisfy our exterior urges. He's not entirely wrong. But how many of us care about wrong when things feel right? How many of us care about anything when things feel right? How many of us can actually fix what we break? So, we find the path of least resistance. The shortest distance between two points. I know you're cheating again, maybe. And that's okay. That's totally normal. Par for the course for the rehab process. And I know you've heard this spiel before, but I genuinely, sincerely believe that you are capable of getting better. That's the God's honest truth. I'm here for you, okay? And there's nothing that can change. Your bi-weekly therapy session with Dr. Richard Packard has ended. Extend your session by... You have selected no. Are you sure this is correct? You have again selected no. You should really reconsider. Have you reconsidered yet? Click yes for $20 off your next appointment. There's something morbidly beautiful about a candle. The way it lives to slowly not. Its functional state, one of complete eventual self-destruction. Like it's accepted its fate just by existing. Meaning isn't found hiding behind a tree or stolen away in some far off castle. There's no destination. Just one long, empty journey.
one long journey. And we aren't alone in ours. We aren't alone. Here we are, again. Here we are. We do what we have to do. We do what we have to do.